Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to look at tracing handwritten text in Illustrator. So we're going to convert this line work into vectors. Well, we're only going to do one piece and we're going to do one piece for a really good reason. This text has been scanned and it's all in one document in Illustrator. But you're probably going to want to individually trace each one of these elements because they have different qualities. This text has thicks and thins. This one's fairly even in thickness, particularly the two pieces of text around the word birthday, but it does have a different sort of characteristic to this text. And the text down here is very spindly. So it's going to be very unlikely that you'll find a single image trace setting that will allow you to trace all of these successfully. So you're better off doing it bit by bit. So even if you scan everything into a single document, you'll probably want to pull it apart into its component pieces before you work on it in Illustrator. If you've got Photoshop, it's probably best to do it in Photoshop, but you can do it in Illustrator. Particularly in the most recent versions of Illustrator that actually have a crop tool in them. So I'm going to click on the document, which is the scan embedded in an Illustrator document and choose Crop Image. And using the new Crop tool, I'm just going to crop around the text that I want to work with. When you're scanning these words, you'll want to scan in at very high resolution. So think in terms of, say, 300 or 600 DPI. That will be ideal for a good quality scan. The scan I'm working with here is a little bit less quality than that, but we'll have a go at it. So because this is a bitmap image, scans are bitmap images, we automatically get the image trace options appearing on the screen in Illustrator. So I'll click on image trace and once the trace has occurred, I can accept it or I can edit it and we're going to edit it to get a better result. So I'll click here on the image trace panel. In other versions of Illustrator, you might need to open that up from say the object menu, but you want to be seeing this image trace panel. At the moment it's set to trace in black and white, which means that every pixel in the original bitmap is being converted to either black or white. And the threshold value is where it tips from black to white. So a higher threshold value will mean that more of the black pixels or the grey pixels even are picked up and called black. If you take the threshold value to a less direction, then you're going to start losing pixels. And you can see that we've lost a whole lot of pixels in this image have been determined that they're now white and not black. So somewhere around midway to a little bit more than halfway is going to work really well for this particular text. In the advanced area, which you can get to by clicking this disclosure triangle, you get three options you can work with, paths, corners and noise. Each of these can affect the final result. With paths and corners, the higher value means you're going to get a more accurate trace. So if there are little bumps around the text, then they're going to be traced as little bumps. Whereas if you drop them to low values, then everything's going to be smoothed out a lot more. So if you're looking for a smoother result, then setting paths to a lower value is going to work well for you. Now you may notice that every time I make an adjustment to one of these sliders, Illustrator goes and retraces the text. Now, because I'm working with a very low quality scan, that's happening really quickly. But if you're working with a really high quality scan, you might find that that's bogging down your computer because every time you make an adjustment, you're doing the trace over again. Well, if that happens, turn preview off. And now you can make adjustments and it's not until you turn preview back on again that Illustrator will actually make the trace. So you'll be able to see the results then of whatever settings that you have created. I'm going to leave preview on. So corners, high value, lots of corners, low value, less corners. In other words, it's going to be much smoother. So if it's a smooth result you're looking for, set your corners to a lower value. Now with noise, we're going the other way because if we have a low value for noise, we're going to be scanning around any little bumps and lumps around the edge of our text element. But if we go for a high value of noise, we're going to get a smoother result. So typically you'll find that paths and corners will go in one direction and noise will go in the other direction. And it depends whether you want a really accurate trace, in which case you go high on paths and corners and low on noise. Or if you want a smoother trace, in which case you'll go for paths and corners at the low end of the scale and noise at a higher end of the scale. 
Now you'll probably want to also click here on ignore white so that any white in the image won't be traced. You're just going to throw the white away because you don't actually need it. You may also find some value in the snap curves to lines option. If you enable it or disable it, you might find that it has a different result on your trace and you just need to click on it, see what the result is, ask yourself is that what you're looking for or not and then enable it or disable it as required. So I'm going for a really smooth look on this trace. So I'm going to increase my noise value and decrease paths and corners. And if I'm happy with that, the trace has already taken place because I had preview turned on. So I can just expand it by clicking here on expand. And that converts the handwritten text into vector shapes. And now if I click on it with the direct selection tool, you'll see that we can see all the anchor points that are created in the trace. So there is our final traced text. But if you want to do something like smooth it out a little bit, there are some additional options. I'll select over the text and one option is to reduce the number of anchor points with object path simplify. If I turn preview on, I'm told that the original had 243 points and by adjusting curve precision and angle threshold, I can reduce the number of points and in reducing the number of points, I'm going to smooth these shapes out a little bit. I will probably want a high sort of value for curve precision so that we're sort of maintaining the original look of our text, but adjusting angle threshold might also give me some value. Now in this case, I'm not actually reducing the number of points, I'm increasing them, but that might give me a better result and if I like it better, then I'll just click OK. You also have the ability to run the Smooth tool over these elements and the Smooth tool shares a toolbar position here with the Shaper and Pencil tool. You'll need to select your paths first and then you can just run over those paths with the Smooth tool and that will give you some smoothing of your text. You'll just want to undo things if they end up being not what you want the result to be. But you can get some smoothing of irregular areas by running over things with the Smooth tool. Of course, you can also adjust the anchor points because that's the point of turning these into vectors because with the anchor points now accessible to you, you can widen or narrow the lines by just reworking where these anchor points are on your text. But I suggest and highly recommend that you do each individual piece of text separately so that you can set up the image trace options to best match the needs of the text element that you're doing the trace for. I hope this video has been of help to you. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.